Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Down to Earth Astronomy. We are once again looking at Elite Dangerous. And if you're a subscriber to the channel you'll know that a couple of weeks ago I posted a video regarding these um, odd structures that we see s uh, somewhere in, uh, in the galaxy. In this case we're in the Eagle Nebula. And we can see that the stars are clumped up in small groups and that these groups are aligned back towards uh, Earth and populated space. Um, and we see this in many different areas of space. If we quickly move to another cluster here, where I found, we again see a similar pattern here. We can see th the groups are not that uh, easy to see, but they are definitely still lying in some kind of row and line. And that line is again pointing back towards populated space. So, what I talked about in the last video was that I thought, well, is this because the way the stars are generated in the actual game um, are these meant to be some kind of a hidden code message or whatever um, and a lot of people responded and it was uh, was great um, I'm really happy that people uh, helped me out with this because I tried all kinds of different stuff trying to rearrange the stars by number and stuff like that um, and, and as you may know, many of the stars in Elite Dangerous are actually real stars, and most of the actual known stars are, are also in the game. But a lot of the stars are also automatically generated, um, simply because we do not have a full picture of the full galaxy, because if we had all the known stars, we should have a lot more stars around us uh, than at the other side of the galaxy. So some of the stars are, of course, automatically generated. But, in the case of these stars, um, that forms these uh, these lines, they are actually real observed stars that are put into the game. And the reason why they, uh, they are positioned like this is due to the way that you observe the stars. If we go back to the Eagle Nebula again here, um, there we go, and if we look at it from the direction of Earth, it will look something like this approximately. Now it's easy for us to fairly easy to to measure the um, the distance uh, or the position of uh, of the stars in um, in the plane that we're looking. So so we can easily determine if it, if that star there is above or below the next star next to it. Um, but it's as you can see here, it's way more difficult to actually determine the depth of the the image, how far these stars are away, which stars is closest to us, and which stars is furthest away from us. Um, and what you would normally do in, uh, in cases like this, one of the ways that you can do it um, when looking at objects inside our own galaxy is to use the, uh, the PAL axis. Um, so what essentially you would do is you would observe the stars um, and you would measure all their position compared to some of the background stars. You would find some background galaxies that's uh, far, far away and you would measure the angles and distances to that background object and then you would wait half a year until the Earth has moved around the other side of uh, the Sun. And then you would do the same measurements and you would see how the stars have moved compared to the background objects. As you can see, as soon as I begin to move back and forward like this, we can actually begin to get an idea of how the, back, uh, how the depth of the object, how the 3D uh, volume of the object is. Um, but of course, since the amount that the Earth is moving around the Sun is very, very, very insignificant compared to the actual distance out here, the measurements of the distances will be fairly inaccurate. Um, which is why we get these um, structures. Um, so that is the explanation why we see them arranged in small groups like this and why these groups are aligned back to, uh, in this case, Earth. Or in any case, it should be back to Earth. Um, and someone in the last video actually pointed me to, uh, to an article. Uh, let me see if I can find it here. Here it is. Come on. There we go. That talks about star formation in these actual uh, areas. Um, a very good article. Um, I kind of enjoyed it. Um, a bit long, <laughs> but uh, I, I enjoyed it. Many of it is just tables with uh, with data, but uh, a, a decent article. If we go to to the end of the article, 
um, they actually talk about this area if we just looked at the uh, S171 area and the stars in this area and there's some of the pictures from when the stars was originally discovered um, so again an interesting article I'll put a link to it down in the description if you are interested if you want to know more um, but yeah, so that's the explanation for these uh, these structures, and um, well, it wasn't as spectacular as I I hoped, um, but I'm glad I found out I found out, and I'm glad that people um, helped me as much as they as they did. It was really uh, really great, and I had some good discussions with people around the forums about how the stars are generated in the games and how the stars are actually um, located and uh, discovered in real life. Um, so thanks a lot for that, and uh, thanks to everybody who uh, participated. Um, I hope you liked the video. Um, you're welcome to drop a comment down below. Maybe consider subscribing to the channel. Um, and until next time, have a good one.